Welcome back to Nerd with Reviews, where we absolutely fawn over the King Killer Trilogy, because King Killer Trilogy, everybody loves that series because it's obviously one of the highest rated series of all time. And today, we are going to be talking about the novella, a very, very small novella called The Slow Regard of Silent Things. There we go, got the thumbnail. All right, so what did I think of this? There's not much to think about this. It's a very short novel and Patrick Rothfuss immediately up front says what type of novel this is going to be. It's not, it doesn't have a plot. It doesn't have really anything going on except that it is a work of uh, of uh, poetry almost, essentially. This is a masterwork in that. However, in every other class it fails. Oh, also, thanks for 200 subscribers, pretty cool. So being a book devoid of plot itself, how does this work? Well, okay, so we're basically all just trailing on top of this heap of word wordsmithery. Like, it's really, really cool in that sense. Now, there's certain aspects of Name of the Wind that I absolutely adore. Most forthcoming is obviously the prose. I think it's amazing. It's perfectly fitting of the story and of the characters and of the world itself. It's such a great mesh of storytelling altogether, and I find it absolutely flattering. Um, here, we just take that and go to the next level, because in this book, we kind of are not really adapting the prose into the world, we're adapting the world into the prose. It seems like the way that the story is told seems to alter the world around it. It's as if the story was written specifically so that the author could write in this fashion. Because this is very, very different from the King Killer trilogy. This has its own very distinct style, because we're looking through the eyes of Auri, of course. Um, Auri, whatever. And one of the things that she often, very, very often does is that she goes and uh, points to an inanimate object and imagines that the inanimate object has feelings or has uh, some sort of um, emotions and it seems like that is a given thing like it's it's not questioned at all during the story it's just already thinks that these things have uh, emotions and so the plot moves forward the plot moves forward based on that because of that distinctive style i think that it elevates itself above name of the wind even in prose itself i think this is way better written than name of the wind however there are a few problems where i did actually notice like grammatical mistakes that if not grammatical mi mistakes because I, I was looking at them very closely and they definitely seem like grammatical mistakes um if they're not grammatical mistakes then it's just badly told because i was just focusing on that line trying to figure out what's what's wrong with this line because i know my grammar and i knew exactly Exactly what was wrong with it. I was thinking, you know, where's the subject of this sub sentence or something like that, and I couldn't find it. It was very, very annoying to be the least sinister, but it's really, really pushes itself beyond uh, what is normally considered well in prose, and therefore, of course, it's also going to have a lot of the downsides. Like, it's going to be very confusing in certain aspects. Um, this is not a skim. You don't skim through this. You sit down, you read this properly over the course of one or two days. You really don't, you can't, you don't have space to, like, you, you know, let your, let your mind drift and just understand what the characters are doing, basically, because the characters aren't doing anything. This book has nothing going on. It's just this girl going through her life in a place that is a very mysterious and very interesting place, but she doesn't really do anything. There are a few plot lines, technically, that are going through um, and although their plot lines they're not really an overarching plot of the book it seems like this entire book is just side quests and it's just side quests going on at the same time as each other and it's it, it just does not make for a very compelling character read it doesn't make for a very compelling story in itself but the experience of reading this is something else to give you an example of what I'm talking about I think there was a very very long segment in this book uh, I don't actually remember how long it was but I believe it was at least eight pages uh, eight pages of this like it, it's hundred like sixty pages eight pages of this is like what is that, 20%, 5%, something like that. It's 5%, right? And what that means is essentially, this is 5% of the book, and in 5% of the book, she's doing this one thing. You wanna know what it is? She's making soap. She's making soap for 5% of this book, and Patrick does not even care. He just, yeah, make give her soap, make her soap. Now, I gave Name of the Wind five stars because it, I thought it was a breathtaking book, uh, story, story-wise and uh, character-wise, and in every, in every possible facet. I think it's one of the best books I've ever read. Uh, and then Wise Man's Fear, I gave it a four stars because Although it was very, very similarly good to Name of the Wind, there was one glaring, overwhelming issue that I could not put away. And um, I I'll talk about that later in another video where I'm gonna do a series review for this entire series. Uh, but that, I gave it a four stars. This is one step down, this is a three stars. Um, the reason is, there's no plot. There's nothing really I'm latching onto. If I sat down and I read it, I enjoyed it, but I never really felt the drive to sit down and read it. I guess that's the best way of explaining the story because it's not a story, it's an experience. And there's nothing really that memorable about being in a certain experience that's not breathtaking or wild and it's just sort of mysterious it's interesting but interesting in the best way that you can imagine of course through this book i did love auri a lot i thought that she was very well well de developed i i've never seen us go into this mind so perfectly i think that this was such an interesting mind to go into and it was so amazingly dramatically shown to do so in a very powerful way so in what this book is trying to do it achieves itself great i think it's absolutely fantastic for what it's setting out to do 
But I think that what it's setting out to do is really dumb. I don't think that it's a very good storyline altogether uh, because, you know, it's not a very smart thing to do um, uh, to have a story without a plot. I feel like if there was a plot, maybe if we met Kavoth at the end of this, maybe if we started a little bit earlier so that she learned when she learned that Kavoth would come meet her and then she at the end we have her meet Kavoth, you know, it, it's stuff like that that simply maybe would have just changed it, made it into a story that would have just made it 10 times better because right now it seems the, like the middle of a story and I'm not one to just open up to the middle of a story and enjoy that. Usually it's the least favorite part of a person. Um, so, you know, that's where I that's where I leave you guys. So stay tuned if you want to see a series review for the entire King Killer trilogy, which will be out eventually uh, pretty soon, I hope, um, where we will be reviewing the first two books and this book. So subscribe if you want to see that. If you did enjoy this book and gave it a five stars, maybe give it a one star. If you have any opinion, actually, go ahead and let, let me know in the comments down below because I would really, really enjoy talking to you guys. I feel like this is one of those books that I would really enjoy to discuss. If you like this book, though, and you like this review, go ahead and click that like button. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.